Hi guys, Jodie here from Decoras Vintage Designs and if you are new here, hello and if you watch my videos then welcome back. Today I've got this pink bureau behind me, it's something I've painted before. Honestly, I'm really surprised it hasn't had a lot of interest because it's pink, it's pretty, but it just doesn't seem to be selling so I've decided today to give it a whole new look and maybe give it a little bit more attitude so stay tuned for that. I started this piece by painting a base layer of Manatee Grey over the top. I just wanted some really good coverage on there. I didn't use any water and I'm using different brush strokes and also just gently tapping sometimes because I just want to make sure that I've got some really good coverage on there and that all of the original finish has or is going to be covered up. Honestly, it is so easy to paint over refinished pieces. So because this was silk paint and because it is water-based, and it has a water-based built-in top coat in it as well. I could just go in there with some chalk paint and just paint right over the top of it. Um, I don't need to do any sanding, I don't need to do any cleaning or prepping or anything like that. I did give it obviously a good wipe down because it's been sat in my shop for a while and I didn't want it to be dusty, but other than that, I just went straight in with my um, chalk paint. I decided to paint over the pulls this time as well because this piece is going to have lots of attitude to it. It's going to be very layered and textured and I just like my pulls sometimes to look like part of the overall piece. Also all of the products I'm using today you can get below and if you enjoy this video then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. What I have here is some diluted Midnight Blue. So Midnight Blue is a really dark black with a blue tinge to it. This is going to ha overall have a blue, bluey kind of look. So I thought that I thought the Midnight Blue would work really well. I am then just, I have a sponge here. It's just it's nothing special. It's just a really cheap sponge that you can get from any supermarket. And I am then just gently tapping it and I am going to tap it in different directions. And that's going to help build up some really interesting patterns and texture. I think I probably diluted the paint as well. I think it was probably about 60 to 70% paint to 30% water. And I'm also working in sections and just taking my time with this. The idea is, is that I don't want this to look even, so this is not going to be perfect. I say that all the time, I know, but I mean it. So I want to build up different textures, different patterns. I have the paint darker and thicker in some areas and lighter in others. And just take my time with it. There's no rush here. I'm just going to take my time and just build it up in sections until I am happy with the end result. Alright, what I have here now is Antebellum Blue, which is a lovely teal colour. I have really saturated my piece of furniture with water, so I've put loads and loads of water on there. It doesn't really matter what brush you use for this, you can use any brush that you want. I'm using a synthetic brush, but it doesn't really matter. You could use a cheap chip brush if that's all you have to hand. And I'm very, very... So as you can see, the water has thinned it out and made it a little bit translucent can you, so you can see what's going on underneath. I very roughly painted the antebellum blue all over that bottom drawer and lifted it up into some of the second drawer. And then with a clean spr uh, sponge, I'm just going in and I'm just tapping. I'm just doing that tapping technique again, tapping in different directions. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow some of the colours underneath to shine through. It's going to create that cool technique and texture that we love and it's just going to help make this piece look even more layered and grungy. So what I'm doing here and up next is the colour Stormy Seas. So Stormy Seas is a grey but again it has a lot of blue hues and I'm just doing exactly what I did with the antebellum blue. I'm applying the Stormy Seas 
randomly in some areas. Um, I am using a lot of water, you know, to make it thin and translucent. And then I'm going in with the same sponge that I use for the antebellum blue and I am just tapping. So this will mean that some of the antebellum blue will, will be brought up into the stormy seas and it will also help blend it out a little bit as well. Okay, and for the top part of this, I used Mason Dixon Grey, following the exact same process again, you know, spraying a little bit of water, very gradually building up the paint, and then tapping with my sponge. The Mason Dixon Grey also has quite a lot of blue hues to it. So if you think, we've got antebellum blue at the bottom, which is a really strong teal. We've then got Stormy Seas, which also has a which is a dark grey which also has a lot of blue in it and then I am going in with my lighter colour uh, which is the Mason Dixon grey which is lighter than any of the other colours but also again still has a little bit of a blue tinge to it so we're kind of doing almost like a really rustic grungy ombre at this point and I'm just having a play I'm just trying to see what works um, my painting style has always been very free-flowing so I'm just trying to see what works here at this point All right, the underneath finish is now all dried and I'm going in with extra colors. I'm going to try my best to explain what I'm doing at this point because this is where there's no set process to this look. I'm, as I say, I'm just kind of going with it. So I have added a little bit of gravel road here just around that pull. And then again, I'm just tapping with my sponge just to kind of blend it in a little bit. I am now coming in with some more of my watered down midnight sky there in the middle and again patting it, making it look really rough. The idea is this is going to be really grungy, really rustic, really worn down so I don't want anything to look manufactured, um, I want it to look like it has organically, you know, been that it's not been created, that it's just happened organically. Um, I felt like I lost too much of the black um, with some of the bluey grey tones over the top. So I'm just trying to bring some of the black into it. Um, and this is just, again, it's just gonna help it look more rustic and aged. So I decided to apply some of the midnight sky in the middle there. Again, just using the same process with the sponge and the water. I'm going to keep patting my sponge as well until I'm happy that it looks soft enough, that those edges are soft enough. I, you can see here that you, there is an obvious edge to where the midnight sky is, however it's not harsh, it's kind of almost like soft, almost like it's kind of water damaged in some way. So I'm just trying to get that kind of idea in my head as I do this. Um, and then here I am using a little bit of driftwood, which is a really, really light grey and just blending that into some of the midnight sky and the gravel road as well. And I'm just trying to build up different variations of colour at this point, again, just to achieve that rustic look. <laughs> And then decided to bring more of the antebellum blue up at the top here. So this is what I mean. I can't tell you exactly why I decided that. It's just that it felt like it was the right thing to do. So I'm applying antebellum blue in some random areas. Um, I actually have a bit of tissue this time instead of a sponge. That is because the sponge can get really saturated really quickly and cause, you know, um, more of the antebellum blue to go in different places. I didn't want that. I wanted more control over it. So I'm still spraying the furniture with a lot of water. I'm still going in with a tiny little bit of antebellum blue over the top. And then just to blend out those edges a little bit, I'm just using a bit of kitchen roll just to pat it down and soften it up. I wanted to make this look even more grungy and aged, so I grabbed some coffee bean, which is a really dark brown, and with an artist brush, I, I applied it all around those edges, all around the top door edges, all around the drawer edges, and then as I was doing that, I started to spritz with my water mister and just allowed it to drip a little bit as well. And this is what's going to make it look really weathered and grungy and just that little bit dirty, you know? Um, and I also did the same in 
in the little decals there as well. If you think, actually, I don't really love the drips, then just have a bit of a kitchen towel or a rag on hand just to mop up those drips a little bit. Or if it dries and you decide you don't like the drips, then just have a baby wipe or a damp rag and, you know, and they can just wipe straight off um, as long as it hasn't been sealed and cured. But yeah, so I just thought, okay, it just needed something a little bit extra. I thought, why not go out full grunge for this piece? So that's what I decided to do. Once it has hole dried, I decided to go in with some clear wax. So I'm using Best Dang Wax here in clear. I'm using my Le Petit brush, which is my favorite wax brush, and I am applying an even layer all over the piece. So you don't necessarily have to go in there with clear wax if you don't want. You can use clear top coats, but I my wax is always my preference. I am then going to apply some decorative waxes over the top of this. I like to put a base of clear wax on first before I go in there with decorative waxes because then it just acts as a base and it gives me control over the darker waxes when I decide to apply them. So here I'm using Best Dang Wax in black and I am applying it straight over the clear and I'm using a French tip brush and the reason why I'm using the French tip brush is because um, it is kind of, it has a really small tip. Again it's just about control, I just want to make sure that I don't go too crazy or heavy handed here with the black wax and I'm mainly just applying the black wax all around those edges and maybe a little bit around the pulls as well and this is going to create almost like a soft big net and it will also make it look even more aged and a little bit more grungy as well you can again you can skip this part if that's not for you but I would just say do you know what if you're going to do a grungy piece you might as well do it properly do you know what I mean so um, go in there get your waxes get your darker colours and really just have fun and go with it Last but not least, I grabbed my copper patina paint. I'm actually not going to use it as a patina. I just, I'm just going to use it as the metallic. And I applied this very, very softly all around the pulls. I just dotted it out a little bit with an artist brush just to create a bit of a patina. I then very thinly and carefully drag the copper down to make it look like it had start to weather and run. And here's the finished look. Is the grunge look for you? Let me know in the comments. And as always guys, have a great time painting and look after yourselves. Bye bye.